morning guys it's pastor chris at true life way hope you've had a great day hope you're having a great weekend if you can't tell by my voice i'm a little bit under the weather this morning i woke up yesterday with a sore throat still have a sore throat uh, but we're going to do our prayer and fasting sermon uh, the fasting aspect today uh, whitney's working the boys stayed up late so i'm gonna record this for you guys to post on uh Facebook and YouTube, but then, you know, when they get up and Whitney gets off work, we're going to go through this as a family and really talk about the fasting aspect of prayer and fasting. But today is the part two of prayer and fasting for the series of 2023. And if you followed us for some time, you know, when I preach about prayer, I preach about fasting because those two, they go hand in hand. There's power in prayer and fasting. Fasting puts us in a state where we have to rely on God, to, and it puts us in a state where we realize that, hey, He is our strength. You know, when when we start to feel weak, when we start to get hungry, we realize that He is our strength. There's there, that that's where our power comes from. You know, and there's also that there we know that there's power in prayer. Prayer is our communication with our Father. We've talked about this. We we, we talked about this two weeks ago. Now, last week I was going to uh, try to bring a water plant talk, but oh goodness, things were going so busy that I just didn't have a chance to do it. But this is how we talk to him, and we have more prayer and fast. And when we have more prayer and fast, then we're going to see an increase in him and a decrease in us. And that is what we need in our life. He must increase, I must decrease. We can read that in John 3.30. He must increase, but I must decrease if you bow your heads we're going to pray lord we thank you for this day that you give us god we thank you lord for your many blessings i ask you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today god let it grow and nurture in them and lord i hope by the end of this this fasting uh, sermon that people will have a better understanding of why it's a good idea to to, to fast and why it, it, it's important that we fast from time to time and we step away from the social media. We unplug ourselves from the social media. We spend more time in our word, God, in, in your word, God, and we spend more time talking to you. And we love you today and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just name pray, amen. As I said, what is fasting? You know, we do this sermon all the time. But a fast, by definition, is abstaining from all food or some food or drink, especially as a religious observation or observance. I fast because it allows an increase in my faith. You know, I say this all the time that it allows a decrease of myself and an increase in him. You know, I, I, I don't have to try to rely on my own understanding. I don't have to lean on my own understanding because I know my strength comes from the Lord. That's that's where my strength comes from. And there's no doubt about it in my mind. There's times where I can't, I can't do things on my own, and I, I, and, I and, so, and and that's one of my weaknesses. I like to be able to take control of things. I like to be able to make things happen. But sometimes, you know, I just can't do it, and I have to rely on God to get it done. I have to rely on the Lord. And this fasting puts me in a state where I can understand. You know, the things that I need to let go of. You know what, Chris? Sometimes it's okay for you to just let go of something and let God handle it, okay? You know, that's why I'm preaching to myself right now because that's the way I feel sometimes. Because I want to be able to hold on. I want to be able to, to take the reins. I want to be able to say, yeah, I know this is going to fall into place. This is what's going to happen. But prayer and fasting puts me in that state where I don't lean on my own understanding. Amen? That's, that's what prayer and fasting will do. And there's several types of fasting that you can do, you know, and I don't like to let people know when I'm fasting because I like to let that be a one-on-one -on -one thing between me and God, which I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit of the sermon. If you don't know, if you haven't noticed, I haven't been getting on Facebook. I hadn't commented on anything. I hadn't said anything. I actually, de not deactivated it, but I, I uh, disabled it on my phone so the icon don't show up. I don't get notifications. I've been doing it for a week. Whitney's been doing it for about two weeks. She's got a... Uh, uh, let's see, I don't remember how, how many days she was going to do her, her fast for, but she's unplugging from the social media. She's unplugging from uh, the, 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 the Facebook so she can focus on more important things. Amen. And so I started last Sunday and I'm going to continue on for as long as I feel like I need to, but also been trying to participate in a daytime fast, but we're going to talk about a couple of these fasts here. And the one that you choose is between you and God. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's 
is between you and God. And as I always say, that God will honor your best sacrifice. He will honor your best sacrifice. If you want some power in your life, you fast. And it don't matter what type of fast you pick, you fast. And you, and keep it between you and God. Let it be, be between you and God. But we're going to talk about a, a couple of different fasts that you can participate in. They're not always by yourself. you got corporate fasts, private fasts. And many different types that you can go through, but just as a quick, you know, as a like a general overview of some of the fasts, you've got a full fast where you all all you do is drink liquids all day. And you establish however many days you want to do that fast. You may have a Daniel fast where you eat no meats, no sweets, and no bread. You drink water and juice, eat fruits and vegetables. That's I, that's a fast that we've participated in in the past. You, you can have a partial fast or a daytime fast, which is something I'm doing right now. A partial fast or a daytime fast, you know, it's just whenever the sun's up, you don't eat. You can you can drink water or whatever, I, 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 but you don't eat during the daytime hours. When nighttime comes, you eat. You can eat early in the morning before, you know, uh, nighttime falls. I mean, daytime falls, which would be good for somebody like me who's diabetic because, well, sugar drops throughout the day when you don't eat. But a full fast, Daniel fast, or at least give up an item or a food. And, and you know, that's what traditionally, that's how fasts are. They, they, they were always, you know, you fasted food. You stepped away from the food. And uh, there's a type, those are a few examples that people like to do. Some people, you know, will fast from technology or social media. Like I said, that's what Whitney and I is doing right now, that we just step away. We unplug from the, 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 the social media. We unplug from the people, the, 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 the negativity that's on there, and it allows us to step back and get more into our word. It allows us to step back and get it more into prayer. God, as I said, will, will honor your best sacrifice. It may be good to fast from social media from time to time and get away and disconnect. Because when you look at, I mean, sometimes if you have an Android phone, I don't know about iPhones, but if you have an Android phone, you can look on your uh, your app history, and it shows you how much screen time that you've had on such and such app, on Facebook app, on YouTube app, and you would be uh, you would be amazed at how much time you spend scrolling through Facebook or watching YouTube videos. And I'm not saying Facebook and YouTube is a bad thing, but in, in excess, it is, and that that goes with anything. Anything that you put before the Lord is in excess. That is a bad thing. But, but you know, as I said, traditionally it's always been food that was fasted. But why do you think that it was food that was being fasted? Well, there's an account in the Bible that tells us that Jesus was led into the wilderness. You know, we talk about this. He was to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. And we can read that in Matthew 4, starting in verse 1. It says, then, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Jesus had, had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and, and later on he was hungry. Jesus was the fleshly manifestation of God. He was man. He was flesh and bone just like we are. He was hungry, and you know, and, and when you start feeling hungry and you start to feel weak, that is the weakened state that I I talk about when I talk when I when I preach prayer and fasting. It's a state where you start to feel vulnerable. We feel less secure. We feel like we're more likely to fall in this state because you know you know I'm trying to fast from food. I I I, I can't do it. I don't want to step. You know I don't want to mess up my fast. So it, it puts you in that state where it's like oh just one little bite's not going to hurt. It puts us in that weakened state where we have to rely on God. Amen? We have to rely on God to get us through it. And it's when we get into this weakened state that Jesus, I mean, the devil likes to show up. And he, he wants to try to cause you to fall. He wants to try to trip you up. He wants to try to mess you up. Satan showed up in the wilderness just to do the same very thing to Jesus. He wanted to tempt Jesus. He wanted to mess Jesus up. Verse 3 says, And when the temper came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He tells Jesus, If you're really the Son of God, command that these stones be made into bread, because you know you're hungry. If you if you just command that these stones be made into bread, you'll have food to eat. You won't have to be hungry anymore. You won't feel this weakness anymore. But in verse 4, Jesus said, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil continues to mess with Jesus. He's still tempting Jesus. 
And you know, the devil takes him up. The devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then, Je then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Jesus was able to withstand the devil. He did not fall into temptation, but stood on the word. He stood on the truth, and the devil, and told the devil, Hey, yo, get out of here. I, I, tell him, I don't got time for you, devil. I just say, you got to go. The devil left, and the angels came and attended to Jesus. Don't allow the devil to come in while you're fasting and cause you to fall into, into temptation. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to see you fall. If you follow True Life Way for any length of time, you know that I always say that the devil, he, he wants to come in and try to mess you up. He wants to come in and try to trip you up on every little thing that you can possibly trip up on. Some things you wouldn't even think. How in the world are you going to trip underwater? Like that movie, uh, what was it, Shark Tale? And you got a whore, uh, the seahorse flip trips underwater. How did that... But the devil's wanting to do that. The devil wants to try to do that to us. He wants you to mess up. He wants you to just totally not get anything right. That's what the devil wants to do to us. And especially when you're fasting. When you come into this weakened state. You, maybe you're fasting from technology. It's like, oh, I just want to look at one, one, one video. I just, want to, I just want to look at one person on Facebook. I just want to see one post. I just want to comment one post. Stick to your fast. Put on the whole armor of God and pray. Stay prayed up and stay ready. <coughs> because the devil's like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He's prowling around just waiting to pounce on you. And we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready because he's going to come at you when you, don't, when you least expect it. In these moments when you're doing a full fast, you become hungry it's real easy for the devil to come in and tempt you just like he did with Jesus. And the account we read in the Bible, it's easy for you to just fall. And he's like, oh, it's just one little bite. It's not going to hurt anything. And as we mentioned, that will put an in, the fasting puts an increase of your need in God. And, and, and the devil does not want to see that going on. The devil does not want to see any kind of relationship between us and God. He doesn't want to see that. He, 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 he can't stand that. He, he wants to see us weak. He wants to see us not be able to walk. He wants to see us on our knees crawling. He don't want us to be successful. He don't want us to have a relationship with God because he wants you. Remember that message I preached? Hell wants you. He wants you in hell with him one day. But as mentioned earlier, be ready and be prepared when he pounces. Because it's just, it's just any moment he's going to pounce on you. And I tell you right now, this morning, I don't. The, the devil didn't want me to preach this message evidently. Because every time I tried to print it, the last page would print, of my notes, the last page would print just fine. And then, then the next couple of pages, it's a bunch of streaks. And here's the thing. I did a print head cleaning, a, a cartridge cleaning, and it came out perfect. I mean, it looked fantastic. I mean, it was a beautiful print job. Okay, I'm going to print my net, my, my uh, sermon notes again. Same thing. I tell you, that's why I've got my notes pulled up on the screen behind me. That's why things are set up a little bit differently, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes to get this message out. I'm going to get the message out no matter what. I don't care about sitting out in the, my, my truck and record out there. I'm going to get the message of, of, of the Jesus out. But now I'd like to talk about the two type of fasts that you can participate in. And you got the corporate or the church fast, and then you got a private fast. Both fasts are biblical. They're both, you can, can both be found in the Bible. And I've said this numerous times. Like I say, if you watch True Life Way, you followed us. I take fasting very seriously. I take it very serious. I can't stand to see fasting being taken as a joke when you, you know, oh my gosh, I'm about to starve or, oh, I'm about to die. I'm about to give up. <coughs> Fasting's not a joke, people. Fasting is not a joke. Fasting is something that increases your relationship with God, it increases power. So why would you want to play around with this? Why would you want to act, act well, I'm just going to be honest, why would you want to act a fool when it comes to your fast? 
You don't have to get on social media saying, oh, goodness, I cheated on my fast and, you know, laugh about it. And you put your little laughing emojis on there. <coughs> or I'm about to die. I always say that in my examples. I'm about to die because I've seen that in, in, in the past. You know, people don't want to take the fast seriously. That's like it's just a, a little game, but it's not a game, people. God will honor your best sacrifice. Your best sacrifice. You know, I was trying to do a daytime fast yesterday. I forget how far I made it. I started feeling real shaky. My sugar dropped out real low. I said, well, I've got to eat. So I ate something so to keep my sugar up. God's going to honor my sacrifice, my best sacrifice. I didn't get on, well, I'm, I, 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 I've unplugged from Facebook too. So I didn't get on there saying, you know what, I, I, I felt like I was about to die so I wouldn't eat something. No, this is a, a, a thing between me and God that I, I, I want to increase my relationship with him. I want to increase my faith in him that I know when I get hungry, when I get weak, he's going to provide for me. But he also gives, he gives me common sense. He's like, hey boy, you might want to eat something before you pass out. Amen? That's the way I look at it, too. You know, one time I was on Facebook, and I seen a post about fasting, and it wasn't something somebody saying, oh, I, I, I was cheating on my fast, blah, blah, blah. I hope pastor don't find out. I can't stand that nonsense. You'll, you'll find that out real quick. I can't stand when you don't take your fast serious. But to shorten the post a bit, and it's a pastor friend, he says, fasting unlocks some things that would not come by any other way. Don't be casual about it. Don't be casual about your fast. Fasting, as I said, is between you and God. I don't, I'll don't. i say that 500 times in this sermon if I have to. Whether it's a corporate fast, private fast, daytime fast, technology fast, whatever it is, take it serious. Don't be casual about your fast. But let's talk about corporate fast or church fast. These are great for the whole congregation to come in together and fast for a common goal. I've seen churches fast for new sound equipment. They fasted for buildings. They fasted for favor. They fasted for, you know, uh, a new building, new lights, new equipment, whatever it may be. But, you know, and, and all the members in the church in general, they come together for a common cause. And, and there's many reasons why a church may call call for a fast. It, may, it might be a, a fast, and, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to fast for some revival in the, in, in the community, some revival in the area where we live. <coughs> Fasting as a congregation is great that you can work for work with each other, build each other up, encourage them. It brings forth some unity to the church. It's a great thing to see the church fasting together, encouraging one another. And that brings me, I want to read a scripture, Psalms 133, for, uh, verse 1. Psalm 133, verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Iron sharpens iron. We are there to be the help for one another. We help our brothers and sisters. This fast can bring us all together. And something I'm about to mention, we can still fast for our own personal things while we are in a church fast. But let's read that in Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. During these corporate fasts, I have fasted for my own needs as well. Yes, yes. That is, you can fast for your own needs while fasting <coughs> for other reasons, while participating in a church or a corporate fast. You can, in fact, fast for your own needs. Because you know what? The God we serve, he's not, he's just, he's not just a, a one-track mind like we can be sometimes. No, he's, he, he can be anywhere, everywhere, at the same time, and he's always listening. Amen? I'm thankful for that today. But these fasts give us a deeper connection, a richer connection with the Lord, a better signal, if you will. With your, you know, we always want the best signal we can get with our Wi-Fi or data. But fasting makes us humble ourselves before the Lord. It will increase our faith because now all of a sudden you realize, hey, I, I can't do it by myself. I got to have the Lord for my strength. You realize you can't do it all alone and it activates a power within us. Let's read an example of a corporate fast. Where people, a group of people come together. And we can read that in Ezra 8, 21 through 23. And it says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Hava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. 
because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all of them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Ezra proclaimed a fast so they could humble themselves before God to have a safe journey. And for their children and all that they had, they fasted and prayed to God. Verse 23 says that their, their prayer was answered. They were fasting for a right way for us. When we fast, we should be fasting for the right way for us and a will of God in our lives. Amen? That's the things we should be, the, the, exactly what they, in here, what we just read. I proclaim to fast at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek a right way for us. Amen? That's what we need, a right way in the will of God in our lives. Amen. Another fast, a private fast. As I've mentioned a thousand times over, fasting is very important, very serious, and should be taken as such. We are to humble ourselves before the Lord, relying on the Lord for our strength. Private fasts are done individually. Or, you know, small groups of people. It might be like, like Whitney and I. We're fasting from Facebook. We can encourage each other on that on that front. Uh, but you can fast for your needs, the church needs. It doesn't matter. You can fast if you it, for whatever you need to fast for. It might be a financial burden that's coming up or anything. It, maybe you're just fasting because I want a better life. I want a better relationship with Jesus. I just want to, you know, strengthen my relationship with God. Perfect. That a fast does that for you. But if you decide to fast with friends, I always say, let's make sure you're fasting with faithful friends that are going to encourage you and build you up. Amen. You don't want to be fasting with a group of friends. And, and you know, you know, it could go both ways. It could help that you can say, maybe the person that you feel that's not trying to be as encouraging, maybe you could encourage them and get them to better understand why fast should be taken serious. But you don't want unnecessary things to bring you down and, and to tempt you from your fast. You know, it's important. But Jesus had a few things to say about prayer. He also said stuff about fasting. You know, and as we say, Jesus, he set the example on how we're supposed to live, on how, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to treat people. But Matthew 6, 8, uh, 16 through 18, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you that they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. These are verses you've seen before. We've read them here before, especially if, if you follow your life way. People who know me, who really know me, no, I take these script, these verses very serious. That when I'm fasting, it's a very serious thing. I'm not casual about it. I want to I want to do it right. I want I want as much of an increase in God in my life, as much increase of favor in my life as possible. That's how that I treat my fast very seriously. I want my fast to be an intimate event with God. I'm asking for God's will to be done in life. I'm looking for favor. I'm looking for grace. I'm looking for mercy. I want to hear the mighty voice of God telling me his plans concerning me in my life. I want to know what he wants me to do. When I say, speak the word, Lord, and your servant will go, I want him to speak the word to me. Lord, tell me where you want me to go. Tell me what you want me to do. I want to do that. I want to hear him tell me where I need to go. I want to hear him tell me this. Amen? I want to use this time to focus on my relationship with God. Amen? And I always use this example. I'm getting ready to close out, but I always use this as my example. You know, one day I was at work, I was praying and fasting, and one of the guys asked me if I was going to eat anything for lunch, and I just, I said, no, I'm not going to. I, I didn't want to tell him that I was fasting. He asked if I had money. Yeah, I had money. That's not the problem. I wasn't, it wasn't that I was broke. Which I may have been broke, I don't remember. But that that was not the reason anyway, so I wasn't eating. It wasn't the fact that I didn't have money. He eyed me and, and, and finally asked, are you fasting? I smiled, nodded, yeah, I'm fasting. <clears throat> it isn't anyone's business, it's between me and God. Now, you know, I know if I had told him, yeah, I'm fasting, I, I, it wouldn't have taken anything from my fast. It wouldn't have stopped the fast. If I had a blessing coming my way, you know what, God still would have gave me the blessing. He's not going to say, hey, 
You told that man you're fasting. I, I, you're not getting blessed today. That, that's not how he works. But I, I, I just, I maybe take it too serious sometimes. I, no, I don't think so. I don't think I take it too serious. I think I, I take it serious just enough. But you know, I, I don't act different. I don't talk different. I don't appear to be fasting before anybody because it's nobody's business. It's between me and God. You know, if I'm fasting, if I'm doing a daytime fast, and you see me not eating, I'm just not eating. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just not eating today. It's not lying. I'm not eating at the moment. I'll eat when it turn when the sun starts to come down. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the way it goes. I I don't I and mean, yeah, like I know it wouldn't have canceled out my fast. I know that. It wasn't gonna return void. I knew I'd still benefit from my fast. I just take it serious. Whether it's church, private fast, whatever it may be, I take it serious. And and, and one thing I want to say, you just, you shouldn't focus on what you're losing. But focus on what you're going to gain. You may be losing some food. You may be losing on some social media time. You may be losing on a, a, a not watching a video on YouTube. You may, you know, you may be losing some of these things, but you're going to be gaining power in the name of Jesus. You're going to be gaining a relationship. You're going to be in, uh, gaining a spiritual increase, a decrease in yourself, and an increase in Him. Excuse me, which is what we want. You're gaining faith. A better in your relationship with Jesus Christ. There's an increase, as I said, in Him, and a decrease in ourselves. That is the focus of a fast, anyways. An increase in Him. We need to understand that that's what the fast is about: is an increase in Jesus, decrease in me. Amen. There's a there, I I have to decrease. Amen. There's no way around it. I have to. I need a spiritual increase. And then as you fast. Be in your word, reading and study. This, this, and prayer and fasting is how prayer. This is how real power comes about. This is what Jesus said. But uh, real quick, as I get ready to get off here, Matthew seventeen fourteen through twenty one. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, "Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water." And I brought him to thy, to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. If you want some power in your life, if if you want to be able to tell mountains to get up and move to yonder place, you got to have prayer and fasting. If you want to be able to have the power to cast out demons, to cause blinded eyes to open, to bring the dead to life, I know these are things that Jesus did, but through prayer and fasting with God in us, we can do these things. And even greater than these. John fourteen twelve. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go and to my Father. We are told that those that believe in me and the works that I do, he can do them. And and greater works shall he do because I, not me, Jesus, goes to his Father. But this kind of faith, this kind of, <coughs> excuse me, this kind of work only comes by prayer and fasting. Fasting, prayer and fasting unlocks some true potential. It unlocks some true power in your life. There's so much power that's ready to be tapped into, but we don't go all the way with it. We don't pray enough. We don't fast enough. Amen. But this coming season, this coming year, 2023, we will be fasting for True Life Way, our ministry uh, for in a, to grow in accordance to His will and to God's will and purpose, for a right way for us to go. And he, uh, we're going to be uh, church aside. We're going to be praying and fasting for a right way for our family, for your family, a right way for us. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing for. And we hope 2023 is the best year for you, and that God will show you some grace and mercy and favor. Amen. We're going to be praying and fasting for all this. We're going to be praying and fasting for you all. Amen. Because that's what it's about. We need to pray and fast for our brothers and our sisters. Because iron sharpens iron. If you bow your heads, let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to bring the message of prayer and fasting again to True Life Ways audience, God. I thank you, Lord, and I ask that you'll let this message reach the ears that need to hear it, Lord. And, Lord, please let this message be well received, that people don't take offense to it, because I do want to take my fast seriously, Lord. I do, and it sound, sometimes it could come off as sounding harsh, but we need to take our stuff serious when it comes to you, God, and not play around. But, Lord, I just ask that you will let this message reach the ears that need to hear it. It will help us to understand better why we should pray, why we should fast, why we should read our word, God. And, when, Lord, we just we are seeking a right way for us this year, 2023. And we love you today. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just name pray in the church. Say amen. Amen. We truly encourage you when you fast to take it serious. Don't be casual about your fast. Allow it to truly, you know, richen your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't be casual. Take it serious. And with that being said, I hope you got something out of this message. I hope you understand a little bit more now on why we we pray and why we fast. But we love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.